Hello viewers, your presenter here, Mr. Nyati, with uh, a video basically to look at uh, chemistry, which is science paper 2, 2025, the one that uh, the GCE candidates just wrote last month. So in this video, we are basically going to look at uh, section A of the question paper and uh, possibly be able in other videos of course tackle questions in section B in bits that is question one question uh, B1 uh, and, 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 uh, 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 one video B2 and a separate video and so on and so forth and possibly section C before we go to section, uh, I mean to paper one of science, which is physics. So this is chemistry, I must clarify that uh, science paper two in the Zambian syllabus is basically chemistry. And so I would also love you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also like share the video and uh, give me feedback. So let's get started. We move to question one. Question one reads, um, Elena accidentally sucks into the mouth a solution of sodium hydroxide. Okay, let me read that. Elena accidentally sucks into the mouth a solution of sodium hydroxide during titration. Choose the appropriate action Elena should take. Now, I want you to understand this question candidly or clearly the question says elena accidentally sucks into the mouth the question doesn't say elena sucks and swallows but just sucks into the mouth so the solution is in the mouth and does not proceed via the esophagus into the stomach but is strictly in the mouth and the learner realizes that they have sucked, sucked in sodium hydroxide solution. So what is the appropriate action? Even you, I'm sure the first thing you do is to spit it out and thoroughly cleanse your mouth. Even before, how do you inform your teacher with the solution of sodium hydroxide in your mouth? So the first thing that you're supposed to do is to spit out the solution and thoroughly cleanse the mouth with water so that is the answer so we write the answer for question one uh, a1 the answer is uh, this one looks awkward so we're saying question one the answer is d we move on to question two question two says which state state or states that is if there are more than one of matter exist or exists at the boiling point of a substance well what you need to understand is that if you have a substance like this going through the stages of of changes of change of state here you know that you have solid liquid you should always know that the slanting caves are the basically states of matter in single entity and this one is gas but where you have flat caves this is a combination of the two from where it's coming from and to where it is transitioning to so here we have solid and liquid here you have liquid and gas now these flat caves are points what do we mean the temperatures at which a change of state takes place the constant temperature so here we have melting point and here we have boiling point so we go back to the question the question says which states of matter exist at the boiling point of a substance here we have liquid and gas so the answer is C we move on to question uh, three the question says the diagram show changes of states among the three uh, states of matter. We have solid, liquid, gas. We have changing from solid to liquid by melting. 
liquid to gas through evaporation again gas to liquid through condensation and freezing being the one the process by which a liquid changes to solid now the question says why are these changes called physical changes rather than chemical changes this is because here we have the answers they are reversible well we have a reversible reaction that takes place in the production or manufacture of ammonia the industrial manufacture of ammonia where nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas react in a forward reaction to produce ammonia and ammonia again in a reversible reaction produces the reactants so this one is not applicable this one is not applicable produce new substances no produces no new substances the answer is d for question three the answer is d to move on to question four question four says which of the following is the best method used to separate sugar crystals now when you see crystals the, the, the answer should be crystallization from sugar solution during the production of sugar crystallization is the answer question four the answer is a we move on to question five question five says elena accidentally mixed iodine crystals iodine crystals also when it comes to method of separating mixture it's sublimation with magnesium chloride let me read this question again elena accidentally mixed iodine crystals with magnesium chloride which method would be suitable to separate this mixture sublimation the answer is uh, D. We move on to question six. Question six reads: Which of the following is the approximate approximate mass of atomic uh, in atomic unit for electrons? Well, we need to know that electrons is actually one over one thousand eight hundred and forty atomic mass units. So the answer is uh, B. We move on to question seven. Question seven reads as follows. Uh, the following diagram shows the structure of an atom for element W. So we have this W. What can we come up with from this? We can come up with uh, the electronic configuration of W. We have two first shell. The second shell has one so it has two shells meaning that it is in group i uh, know it is in period two and in group one because of this valency electron which is there so uh the question now comes in to say choose the chemical formula for the compound formed when w reacts with oxygen well what you need to understand is that we need to identify the valence for W. You know, there is a difference between valence electrons and the valence. The valence is the combining power. The number of electrons needed to be lost or to be gained for one substance or one element or atom to be stable. But valence electrons is the number of electrons in the outermost shell of an atom. So the valence of w is one well oxygen at least oxygen we know that the first shell has two the second shell has six so it needs two more electrons this is valence electrons but the number of electrons it needs for it to acquire stability or to have eight as the octet number of electrons is two that is its valence so we are going to write it here and then we swap this we are going to have w with a two and or here this is the chemical formula look for it it's a c question seven the answer is c question eight i would love you to pardon me for that noise of a chicken you know, chickens also find themselves uh, uh, with a lot of freedom to move around around that's besides the point we move forward we go to question eight hydrochloric acid is used to clean some metals the acid reacts with the oxide layer on the surface of the metal which of the following are the products formed now you want you have to be very 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 careful in this question the question does not say hydrochloric acid reacted with a the metal they the examiner knows that you are going to go there 
and write the reaction of hydrochloric acid with any reactive metal to produce a salt and hydrogen gas. And the option is even here. But what the examiner is looking for is your thinking capacity. How are you going to handle this question? It says the acid reacts with the oxide. And we must know that this oxide is a basic oxide or a metal oxide. Now, a metal oxide or an oxide, a basic oxide, is basically a base. So this hydrochloric acid reacts with a base. You can put base here to clarify the, the, the obscurity which is in this question. So to get rid of the obscurity, we are going to put base here so that we know now we now know that hydrochloric acid reacting with base is basically neutralization reaction which gives the result of uh, uh, producing salt and water only so the answer here is d question eight the answer is d we move on to question nine Question 9 says the results of three tests carried out on a solution of compound M are shown in the table. So we have, when you add sodium hydroxide, by the way, this is a qualitative analysis where you are testing for cations. Yeah, this is a, these are cations we're looking at because we're adding sodium hydroxide in the ammonia. So now we have uh, addition of sodium hydroxide aqueous. It gives a white precipitate which is soluble in excess. Aqueous ammonia added to M, you have a white precipitate and soluble in excess. Now, the one which behaves like this is zinc. Calcium does not behave like this. It, when you add in excess, it is usually insoluble. Okay? So we have uh, zinc and aluminium, but this behavior is likened to zinc. What about when we add hydrochloric acid? We are told that there is a, a fever sense of a gas, meaning that it's a carbonate. So when we go to check for the answers, we're going to find that the answer is zinc carbonate, which is C. Question 9 is C. What about question 10? Question 10, we have 2.4 grams of magnesium ribbon was reacted with, uh, with uh, 100 cubic centimeters of uh, 2 more per cubic decimeter dilute sulfuric acid. What is the volume of the gas produced at room temperature and pressure? So, this question requires thinking. What do we mean? Well, what you need to understand is that uh, we are given to say there is 2.4 grams of magnesium which is reacted with 100 cubic centimeters of uh, 2 more per cubic decimeter of sulfuric acid. The product is magnesium, sulfate, a salt, and hydrogen gas is the equation balance magnesium one magnesium one hydrogen two hydrogen two sulfur one sulfur one oxygen four oxygen four balance now you are told that there is 2.4 grams of this and you have 100 cubic centimeters uh, of uh, two uh, more per cubic decimeter of sulfuric acid so here, what you need to understand is that you these two, you don't know which one you're going to use for you to find the volume of this. Now, you are advised, first of all, to identify the limiting reagent and use that limiting reagent to find the moles for this guy and then convert those moles to volume since you have the molar volume or at room temperature and pressure. So you're going to say number of moles for magnesium. You're going to find it to be mass over relative molecular mass in this case which is the, uh, the, 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 the nuclear number which is uh, 2.4 grams over 24 and the answer you're going to get is uh, 0 0.1 moles okay you need to also to calculate the number of moles for this guy but let's realize that uh, 100 cubic centimeters is equal to 0 0.1 cubic decimeter. So you're going to say number of moles for sulfuric acid 
will be uh, you are going to say it will be the, uh, the, the concentration times volume since we know that concentration is equal to number of moles of volume so you cross multiply concentration number of moles become the subject of the formula so what is the concentration it is 2 multiplied by 0 0.1 cubic decimeters and what you're going to find is 0 0.2 moles so which one is the limiting reagent what are the coefficients you have one this divided by this it will still give you one 0 0.1 this one divided by one, it will still give you 0 0.2. So this, what I'm doing here, I have explained in one of the videos. You can just go through one of my videos, especially my first, first videos on how to calculate the limiting reagent. So in this case, magnesium is the limiting reagent that we are going to use the number of moles for magnesium to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen gas and then be able to convert that to volume, uh, to, yes, volume. So in this case, what is the more ratio for magnesium and hydrogen? Well, the, the, yeah, the more ratio is uh, 1 to 1. And in that case, you are going to have 0 0.1 moles of hydrogen as well. Okay, because the more ratio is 1 to 1. And that being the case, we now have the number of moles for hydrogen. So we are going to say, use this formula. Number of moles is equal to volume over molar volume. So we want the volume, so I'm going to make this the subject of the formula and we're going to have volume is equal to number of moles times molar volume. And what are the number of moles? We have uh, the number of moles being 0 0.1 multiplied by the molar volume. Remember it is room temperature and pressure which is 24.0 cubic decimeter. So here we are going to put 24.0 decimeter cubed and the answer is going to be 2.4 cubic decimeter being the volume for hydrogen gas. So you don't just rush through. When you use this you are going to get 4.8 and I'm sure 4.8 is here. Okay. When you wrongly balance your equation, you put a 2 here, you are going to get this one. So the, all the answers are there, but you are looking for the correct answer. So this one is the correct answer, and it is B. So question 10, the answer is B. We are supposed to go to question the next one, which is question uh, 11 to 20. Shall we pause and 